have you guys seen those beautiful hand painted wallpapers? Have you also seen the price tag? Ouch. Today we're gonna to show you two easy ways to get that look for under $20. Hey there, Remodelaholics. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Cassidy, and we are so glad to have you. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and click that notification button so that you can see our new DIY videos every week. Today's video features not one, but two awesome faux wallpaper styles that you can get done in a weekend. And the best news, each of them will cost you less than 20 bucks. 20 bucks. What else could you spend 20 bucks on? These techniques were used in nurseries for brand new sweet little babies, but you could use them in a powder room, in a hallway, in a closet, wherever you want, small little areas, or you could go big and do a big wall. It's up to you. Our first faux wallpaper comes from our contributor, Allison from Shark Tale, and has been creating a beautiful gender neutral nursery. I don't know about you, I couldn't wait to find out what I was having, but Allison is brave and so she is going for it. Tell me in the comments below if you had to find out when you were pregnant what the sex of your baby was, boy or girl, or if you were brave enough to go and have that be a surprise on the day that you gave birth. Woo! Anyway, back to painting. Allison saw a beautiful wallpaper with the phases of the moon and she knew she could create that on her own. For a lot less. She thought about stenciling the wall, but then she realized how much time that would take using a stencil over every portion of the wall. So instead, she grabbed some supplies, and yes, that's an ordinary kitchen sponge, to create her own stamp. In Allison's case, she had already ordered the stencil, so she used that to trace the outlines of the moons onto the sponge. You can get the link to the stencil from the description box below, or you can freehand whatever kind of style of look you want. Carefully cut out the shapes, and then glue them equally spaced in the center of a scrap board. Be sure that the side you traced is the side facing up, since that will be most accurately cut shape for your stamp. If you want the design to be really straight on the wall, you might want to attach a small bubble level to the stamp board as well to keep the rows even. Allison mixed some leftover paint to get the color she wanted, dipped the stamp and then carefully pressed it on the wall and then she just kept going. Because she staggered the pattern, there were a few spots on the edges of the walls that needed to be hand stamped. So Allison actually peeled the stamp from the block and use them individually to fill in any gaps. Allison also had a few tips for you when you are creating this look for yourself. Stagger the stamped rows for a more organic handmade look. Before you add it to the wall, be sure to test a couple of the stamps to make sure you get the right pressure and the right amount of paint on the stamps. Any mistakes you make, quickly wipe up with a damp cloth. Or you can always paint over it and re-stamp it too. Remember, you don't need to re-dip the stamp every time. That will help with the handmade look to have different depths of the paint color. Hold the stamp firmly and don't press too hard or paint may drip down the wall. Regularly wipe off the edges of your sponges to make sure you're not getting any weird paint globs on the sides of your stamp. Don't forget to step back and check how it's looking ever so often so that you can make sure overall on the wall that it looks good. The best part about this project is Allison was able to finish this whole wall in two hours. Try to do that with a stencil. It is gonna take way more than two hours. And ta-da! Doesn't it look so perfect? I love the fact that this cost, you know, two bucks for sponges, some old paint, and only two hours to accomplish a whole wall in your house. We are ready for accent wall number two, and if you can believe it, this is even easier than the last one. And she actually did this after she had already had her boys and she had two, two, three-month-old babies at home. So this is a fast, easy project that you could do in little spurts of time when you have available. All you need for this project is one blank wall, some leftover paint, and a paintbrush. Felita used a number eight flat brush, which is about a half inch wide. But you can use wider or thinner, whatever you have on hand should work. Test 
out a few patterns on some paper until you get the look that you like. This will give you an idea of how thick and how long you want your brush strokes to be and also how close together you want those brush strokes. Once you get a sample that you like, keep that as a reference for when you're painting the wall. Then start painting. Felita recommends working in a small section only a couple of feet wide, starting at the top of the wall and working down toward the floor, and keeping your test sheet close by to keep the style similar over the whole wall. And then just keep painting and done. This easy faux wallpaper is done in less than a day and adds so much character to a room. So tell us in the comments below which hand-painted wallpaper do you like the best? And I'd love to hear about your painting projects or painting questions that you have that we might be able to answer for you in our next videos. So don't forget to leave those comments down below. We have some other great tutorials for your walls on our website. If you have a rental and can't paint, check out how to apply fabric to your wall to give you a wallpaper look without any permanent commitment. And check out how to do a DIY paneled look, and I will see you later. Bye guys.